Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. And today, we're going to be reviewing the first of my Harry Potter films. It's the fourth in the uh, series, but because we watched it on Saturday, so I'm going to be reviewing it now. But when I do my Harry Potter series reviews, when probably just before Fantastic Beasts come out, it'll be from one to three, and then five to eight, obviously, with obviously the other two Fantastic Beasts films. I might have already watched the first one as well, so scratch that, just the second Fantastic Beast. But anyway, uh, if you haven't obviously checked this out, if you obviously have not read the book or watched the film, spoilers ahead, major spoilers, obviously as I'm skipping a lot of story. Um, and obviously hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and if you're a huge Harry Potter fan, I'm doing a lot of Harry Potter content in the realms of Lego, other games, uh, reviews, talks down the line. So obviously all of content to come when, and if you want to see anything in particular, let me know down below and I'll jump straight to it, of course. And without further ado, let's jump straight to the video. So Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, I, I want to start off by saying, I've watched this a million of times. It's one of the easiest Harry Potter films to watch. It's one of the most enjoyable Harry Potter films to watch, but it's not one of the, I wouldn't say it's top tier. I used to think it was probably one of my favorite. It's probably one of my, I would say it's one of the most enjoyable, but it's storyline. In the realms, they skip a lot of stuff. There's certain scenes, they sort of jump and jump and jump and jump. So you'd probably say it's definitely in the top five of best Harry Potter films, but it's not top tier. <clears throat> but, you know, because Rupert Grin is just shit in this film. I want to put that out there. He's just so annoying. He's a dick to Harry because he believes he's put his name in the, in the Goblet of Fire. Why would Harry ever do that, put himself in danger? He's not a dick. Um, uh, and he's having opinions throughout the film. He's trying to be an owl with our mind. He's telling details. He's trying to help Harry uh, without helping him. He's hostile. Um, he's just he's just a dick all the way through the film. I love his relationship with Hermione. Hermione is the relationship I enjoy the most. Again, go back to Ron. You know the whole U Ball store. How distant he is from Hermione. How on an arse he is with Padma and Patel or whichever one he's with because Harry's with the old one um, and it's just he's just written so shit and I, I spoke about this you know um, when we watched it why does he end up with Hermione there's more chemistry in this film at the end of the film when they're talking about writing to each other and uh, between Harry and Hermione the, the you ball the hug each other at the first challenge uh, the, the there for each, she helps. She puts the towel on Harry at the Black Lake. Uh, you see the relationship between them two. I love it. You know, there's nothing with with Ginny. You know, that just comes randomly in half blood Prince. You know, there's a little bit in the first, one of the first two films, or she runs back up the stairs. Uh, but there's nothing to it. You know, this these two should have been together. You know, if I had wrote it. They had been together. Apparently, someone had said, apparently, JK said they should have been together. And it's just, she's right. Fucking right at yourself, you bitch. You know they should be together. So put them together, you know. But I just want to talk about probably uh, one of the greatest reveals in a villain in film history, in my opinion, it was when Voldemort came out of that cauldron and he just molded into a beast. Ralph Fiennes was built for this role. Um, when you read it, you know, you don't think it, but when you see it, you're thinking, wow, the cloak, the visuals, these bald head, he's no nose. I think the whole graveyard scene was phenomenally done. You know, the reveal of Lucius being a Death Eater, Crab and Goyle, McNair from Prisoner of Azkaban, who was ordered to execute Bookbeak. Um, Peter Pettigrew killing Cedric. It just happens so quick. Uh, the whole development between Harry and Cedric in this film, I think, was a bit, you know, it was okay. I love Robert Pattinson's role in, in it, you know, as I've obviously spoke about him in The Batman. His development as an actor is just truly amazing. He was 17 or 18 in this film, I believe. Um, the, the reason, this is why I said it was a bit iffy of a film. There's too much jumping back and forth. There's too many scenes where uh, that aren't there. I just nothing, you know, when they go to see the dragons, it's like it's such a random scene. Um, uh, why is Madame Maxine out there with <laughs> just roaming around? And then she wants to go closer and look at the dragons. I 
I thought the challenges were, were terrific. The first challenge was definitely really cool. And again, one of the best scenes in the franchise, in my opinion, when the dragon's chasing Harry around Hogwarts. I think it is amazing. And it was done terrifically. The Black Lake was okay. The maze was really good, but again, anticlimactic at the same time. Flo was taken out of the race twice in the Black Lake and the third trial very easily. I think Crumb, there could have been so much more to his character, but again, they didn't do much. The first one, they skipped all three main characters involved, and they just skipped to Harry. The second one, you only saw Crumb as the shark for a split second. Again, Cedric didn't do much in the Black Lake as well, and Flo was ruled out. And the third task all you saw was Crumb get taken out by Cedric and take Fleur out. So the, to have these characters who are highlighted very much, they lost a lot of scenes. I believe in the book they had a lot more scenes, but they just were done very well in the film. Barty Crouch Jr., played by David Tennant, a fantastic actor before he ever became something of a well-known actor in the Doctor Who universe, Broadchurch, St. Trinian's, whatever. Um, I believe, and Jessica Jones, of course, he was okay and could have been utilised in the future of Harry Potter, but was never brought back. Um, again, he was okay. I enjoyed Mad Eye's character, and I love how they brought up like, this Cruciatus curse, the Killing curse, and whatever the other curse was, the Imperious curse, I think. Um, I think in regards to getting a lot of story out there, it was very good. You know, bringing Voldemort back into the story, having Harry's parents appear in the story. The opening scene with Frank at the house, but I think was really eerie and cool. The Quidditch World Cup obviously one of the standouts of the film where the Death Eaters making their debut. Um, imagine when the director, because obviously the, the person who did the fourth film was a unique director. The first time he directed a Harry Potter film, he's in control of Voldemort's introduction. Uh, the Death Eaters introduction, the Quidditch World Cup, the Tarai was a tournament. I love the music in this film. I love what it, you know, how it transitioned from the third to the fourth film. Don't know why Molly Weasley wasn't in the film. They could have included Amos Degri a lot more in the film. Because uh, he included, he was in the last scene, but he just didn't really do much. It's like, you're including these new characters, but not giving them enough time. Fleur's sister appeared in the film as well in the second task. And then she appeared right at the end when they were leaving school. It was just so, there was so much they could have done with this film. And but I believe the JK put too much in the film. It's like there was a huge gap, you know, to get into the first task. And then there was a huge gap to get the Black Lake. And then they skipped to the third task. It's like there was so much content there. There was a lack of rivalry between Harry and Draco in this film. There wasn't enough of, you know, some of the side characters. Neville had bits and bobs to do. But uh, you didn't really have much from the likes of Dean and Seamus. And Dumbledore did bits. Again, but not enough. McGonagall doing bits. I think this film lacked massively on character now. Massively, and now I'm reflecting on it. I think Lucius' reveal was one of the greatest things part of the film. To see him finally be a Death Eater. <clears throat> but um, yeah, overall, I'd give Goblet of Fire 8 out of 10. As I said, it's a very good film, but not the best. Enjoyable for certain. There's a lot of iconic scenes, as I said, especially the graveyard scene. Uh, the trial was a tournament, the dragon chasing Harry Seed. Um, you know, you gotta talk about, you know, Snape's involvement. You see the worry on his scene in a lot of, uh, on his face in a lot of scenes. You see the early stages of how much he cared about Harry. I mean, he always cared about Harry from the first film, as he, if you've watched all the films, how much he was there for him, how much he protected him, how much he always looked out for his best interest. Whilst also, you know, keeping that moody side, uh, you know, so he would never suspect what he was up to. Um, but yeah, a, a, a brilliant, brilliant film with a lot of potential that was lost throughout the film. And I just wished more from it. But uh, I can always watch this film without any issues. It's, I, I don't read too much to this film um, to the point of where I hate it because you could easily rip it apart. Like there was a scene where Ego Kakarov went into a room and it was never explained. Um, why did Mad Eye Moody only have a specific amount of Apologies potions to keep him looking like Mad Eye? Why did Mad Eye stay on for the fifth year? You know, you could go on all the day, you know. It's just, why didn't Sirius appear in the film? He appears in the next one, but why didn't he appear in this one? 
you know, you can go on all day about it, but you know, it was a very good film. I definitely think everyone should check it out. The other reviews, as I said, will be out very soon. Fantastic Beast and the Crime, no, and the Secrets of Dumbledore will be out August eighth. I'm going. I'm going to be watching it that weekend. So all the Harry Potter films will be out before then on the channel. So stay tuned for all of them. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed Goblet of Fire. It's many years old now. So thanks for watching as always. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And take care. Goodbye.